So hi everyone. Um, in this video, we're going to discuss the back titration. Okay, and I think this is one of the areas in stoichiometry that you guys are kind of struggling with. So I just thought of putting up this video for all of you to explain a bit more in detail on what the back titration is all about. Okay, and the areas that we'll be covering in um, relation to the IB topics would be chapter one, eight, and nine. So that would be stoichiometry, um, exit base, and redox reactions. Okay, so in this video, I will be using an example based on an exit base titration. Okay, um, as for redox titration, I'll be putting up more um, discussions in later videos. All right, so for a back titration, the importance that you need to understand is that back titration comes about because not all substances can be determined directly by a direct titration method. So you can't just react everything in one step and expect yourself to know the content of your analyte. Okay, and that's mainly because sometimes you just have unknown compounds that are insoluble, so they can't dissolve in water, you can't analyze them as an aqueous solution. Okay, so you cannot determine the endpoint by just using a direct titration method. Okay, or sometimes you have um, impurities in your compound. So like for example, the calcium carbonate in the eggshell, okay, it's both an insoluble solid as well as a sample that contains a lot of impurities. So if you do a direct titration, then it could affect your results. And that's not something that you want. Okay. Or the third situation could be that there are some volatile substances that may be produced or that may be present in your sample. And um, any loss of it could result in an inaccuracy of your um, analysis. Okay. So generally for back titration, we have the steps below that you can follow. Okay, first off, you have the analyte. The analyte is basically um, the thing that you're trying to analyze, okay, over here. So that is going to be reacted with a known excess of an exit or a reducing agent or an oxidizing agent, okay? So in this case, the example later that I'm showing you is going to be an exit. So let's just say it's an exit, okay. Um, the known excess um, is basically like a defined excess that you have. And you usually know that it's an excess because of experience. So judging by a small amount of analyte that you have, then you just have like um, a small volume of a very concentrated exitic solution. And that should be an excess. Basically, you want to have enough of the um, excess solution so that all of the analyte can be fully reacted. Okay. And the leftover from that, okay, is going to become this so called remaining X. So this is the excess left from the reaction with the analyte. Okay, so then the important thing comes now in the second step, which is the excess that's left over from step one. Now we'll go into the step two, and we need to determine the amount of excess that's left by putting it through a titrant. So if the excess solution here is an exit, then this will be a base. So you have an exit base titration, you can have your endpoint, and then once you get an endpoint, you know how much of the titrant you need. You know how much of the base you need. So if you know how much base you need, then you will know how much exit you have here. So you know the amount of exit that's left from the first reaction. And 
if we call this a y and if we call this an x then the difference between x and y is actually the amount of the excess substance that reacted with the analyte in step one. Okay, so by finding the difference, you know the amount of that acid. Okay, let's just say this is acid. Okay, so you know the amount of acid that reacted with the analyte. And through stoichiometric ratio, you can then find out the amount of analyte that you have. Okay, so now I'm going to work with you through an example. Okay, so this is a back titration procedure, a very standard kind of question. Okay, so we have 3.00 gram mixture of calcium carbonate and calcium chloride that was added into a 50.0 cubic centimeter of 1.00 mole per decimeter cube of hydrochloric acid. And that resulting solution, which is basically whatever that you get from the reaction, okay, it was made up to 250 cubic centimeter in a graduated flask. So that would be um, otherwise known as a volumetric flask. Okay, so it's diluted with deionized water made up to 250 cm cube. And out of that, you are taking only 25.0 cm cube to titrate it with 0.1 mole per dm cube of sodium hydroxide solution. And at the end of that, you determine that 21.05 cm cube of sodium hydroxide was required for a complete reaction in the second step. Okay, so the question is to calculate the percentage by mass of the calcium carbonate in the given mixture. So basically we are going to find out how much of your three gram mixture was calcium carbonate, right? You don't know how they were mixed, you don't know in what ratio they are in. Okay, but you know that the calcium carbonate is actually your active ingredient that reacted with the hydrocarbon acid. So here is the first thing. Okay, so this is the analyte. Right, so the next one is actually your excess exit. which we called it the X just now in the previous slide. The third one is your so-called resulting solution. So this one contains the leftover exit. All right. And then the fourth step is a dilution. You're doing a dilution because you don't want to waste so much resources. You just want a bit of that, okay? And then you can multiply it back, right? By taking a times 10. So out of, you made it up to 250. So you get a more dilute version of your resulting solution. And out of that, you're just taking 25 cm cube. Okay, so this is the one that is analyzed by putting it with a titrate. Okay, and who is the titrant? The titrant is the sodium hydroxide with a concentration of 0 0.100 moles per dm cube. And so at here, we know the concentration of the titrant and we know the volume of the titrant needed because it's 21.05, okay. So both are known. Okay, so now the steps are already verified. It was already um, in line with what we have seen previously in this last slide. Now we're going to go into the calculation. Okay, so for calculations, okay, the first step is to always write down all the balance equations for all the reactions that are happening. In this case, there are only two. The first one, is 
the calcium carbonate reacting with HCl to give you calcium chloride plus water plus carbon dioxide. Okay, so that's reaction one. And then for reaction two, you are reacting the HCl that's left from step one with NaOH. So you basically need to determine the amount of HCl that you have left. That's why you are reacting with NaOH. Okay, and that gives you NaCl plus H2O. Okay. So once you have established these two equations, you will know the stoichiometric ratio. Okay. So now we move on to the next step. In the back titration, we are literally working from the back. So um, the reason for that is the last step is actually the one that you know everything about. So in this case, you know the number of moles of sodium hydroxide because you have the volume and you have the concentration. Okay, so it's this. So you have to write out the formula. Okay, so that is 0 0.100 times 21.05 and divided by 1,000 because you need to convert it into DMQ. And that you get 0 0.002105 moles. Or you can put 2.105 times 10 to the negative 3. We're fine with that too. Okay, so once you get the amount of sodium hydroxide, you can then just do a stoichiometric ratio. So therefore, the amount of remaining excess reagent, this remaining excess reagent is basically your HCl. So the number of moles of HCl that is left from step one is is actually going to be 10 times. Why do you times 10? Because you have 25 for analysis, but it was actually made up to, two, made up to 250 at, at the start, right? At the end of reaction one, you made it up to 250. And then you took out 25.0 for analysis. So you've got to put a times 10. So the times 10, Okay, is going to be 10 times 2.105 times 10 to the negative 3. And that is 2.105 times 10 to the negative 2 moles. Okay, so I'm using 2.105 times 10 to the negative 3 directly because the HCl and NaOH should be in the ratio of 1 is to 1. Okay. So basically NaOH to HCl is one is to one, all right? So now let's move on to the next step. The next step is actually telling us to calculate the amount of excess reagent that reacted with the analyte. And remember in the second slide, that was actually your so-called X minus Y. Okay, so you've gotten a Y, and now you need to get the x first, and you find the x minus y. So that difference of x and y is your amount of HCl that reacted with the calcium carbonate. Okay. So the amount of HCl at the beginning, so that's basically what you put into the reaction at the start. So that's 50.0, which is the volume times 1.00, the concentration. So you get 0 0.05 mole. Okay, so remember this analyte is your mixture of 
CaCO3 plus CaCl2. And remember, this is the active ingredient. Okay. The CaCO3 is the active ingredient. So um, coming back to the calculation, the amount of HCl that reacted with the CaCO3 will therefore be 0 0.05 minus 0 0.02105. So we get 0 0.02895 moles. All right. So once you get the number of moles of HCl, then you can move on to step five, which is to calculate the mass of the pure analyte. Basically, the pure analyte here is your CaCO3. So how do you calculate the mass of CaCO3? Of course, first off, you have to find out the number of moles of CaCO3. And from the equation here, we know that the ratio is one to two. So the number of moles of CaCO3 is actually equal to half that of the HCl. So it's going to be half times 0 0.02895. And that is 0 0.014475 moles. All right. So the mass of the calcium carbonate is therefore just number of moles times the molar mass of the calcium carbonate. And in the case of calcium carbonate, you have a molar mass of 100. And here you get, sorry, here you get 0 0.014475. And so it's, sorry, it's 100.9, not 100. Okay. So it's 1.4488 grams. So which means out of the 3.00 grams that you have, 1.4488 grams would be the calcium carbonate. So that is your so-called pure analyte, because the calcium chloride is considered to be the impurity in this case. So the last step, okay, is step six. That is to calculate the percentage by mass or the percentage purity of the analyte. So the formula for percentage purity in the context of this reaction is the mass of calcium carbonate that you have calculated divided by the mass of the mixture that you have at the start. So that is multiplied by 100%. So you get 1.4488 divided by 3.00. And times 100%. So that is rounded off to 48.3% by mass, which is a three significant figure. Okay, And that is because all the values that you have here are all having a lowest SF of three. Okay, This is four SF, but the rest are all three SF. So we will therefore take the lower SF of three. Okay, so therefore, in this question, the percentage by mass or the percentage purity of the mixture based on the calcium carbonate is 48.3%. Okay, and with that, thank you. Hope you enjoyed the video and hope you find it helpful.